Do you ever feel like worry and anxiety cost you your happiness and freedom? Do you wish that you could stop or slow that spiral of negative thoughts and rise above rumination? We all worry, now what? My guest today is here to give you powerful answers, including stories, lessons, and a roadmap to awakening, courage, and connection in your life. Today, it's time to start rising above worry for good. Victoria Jackson is a legend, an icon, a trailblazer in the beauty world. She's also a medical pioneer who's been honored by the Pope. In 2017, Victoria was inducted by Gloria Steinem into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Victoria Jackson, welcome to the Jamie Kern Lima Show. Worry, I always say, is the seed that gets watered, that turns into the stress, the anxiety, the panic. I mean, I've had a life, you know, well lived. And through all of the different milestones, turning points, you know, just moments in my life, anxiety, stress, panic has always sort of sat right on my shoulder. It is, you know, something that almost every one of us deals with. And so I think for you so courageously talking about it is so powerful. People go, gosh, with all that you've done, you still deal with, you know, stress and panic disorder. And I go, yeah, I do. I would picture sitting you know, across from Oprah, and I would be telling her my story. And then one day I get the call to go to Chicago, where at the time I wasn't flying. And I was like, I I can't go. I I can't get there. I'm, I'm too afraid. There's so much that people know you for, and this other part of you um, has coexisted. And I think there's so many people that are listening and watching this um, that maybe feel alone in worrying or in anxiety. How do you navigate worry and panic and anxiety um, and also not let it rob you of your freedom and not let it rob you of your joy and not let it rob you of like the life that you want to lead? If it's not happening now, it's not happening. That's really good. Yeah. That's really powerful. I spent many years just really not forgiving myself for not being able to do something. So we have to look at and give ourselves some grace sometimes that even with all these books that we read and these tips and the things we listen to, sometimes you're just going to fall short of the mark for yourself and for some reason you're not going to do it. There's people listening right now too that think like, oh, I've blown it. My time, my ship has sailed. I missed that opportunity. It's like, oh, no, no, your whole life is ahead of you. Exactly. Yeah. And you just have to give yourself some space and some grace to navigate it, but not give up. How have you navigated all of that while also then deciding I'm going to, you know, become a makeup artist and I'm going to start building this career? You became one of the most successful women of all time, pioneer in television, sold a billion dollars in products on television. You've done so much while also having this piece of you. Right. Victoria Jackson, you are such well, thank you. a badass. I just think is so powerful about when you got that call, which a call no parent ever no. wants to get. Um, you say, in place of a diploma, I had what mattered most a mother's unstoppable determination. Through the success of my company and my husband's, we spent $80 million of our own money. We don't have any deals, kickbacks with pharmaceutical companies, nothing. We've spent $80 million that's just out there in the universe to help catalyze what has been now four therapies that are out in the market that serve the world worldwide. When you do something, you do something. Yep you had Mm -hmm. a life-altering incident happen. I did, and it was life-altering. But I knew during that out-of-body kind of time for me that I was here for a reason, Mm -hmm. that my life was here for a reason, that this was not going to be how I died. Before we jump into this episode, I'd love to invite you to join this community to hear more interviews and one-on-one conversations with me and you to help you truly believe in yourself and trust yourself and know that you are enough so that you can become unstoppable in living your best life. 
All I want you to do is click on the follow or subscribe button on the app that you're listening or watching this episode on. I love your support. It's incredible to see your comments and how many people you're sharing these episodes with. And I am so grateful to be here for you. And I'm excited to go on this journey with you. So thank you for following and subscribing to The Jamie Kern Lima Show. It means so much to me. Who you spend time around is so important as energy is contagious and so is self-belief. And I'd love to hang out with you even more, especially if you could use an extra dose of inspiration, which is exactly why I've created my free weekly newsletter that's also a love letter to you, delivered straight to your inbox each and every Tuesday morning from me. If you haven't signed up to make sure that you get it each week, just go to jamiekernlima.com to make sure you're on the list and you'll get your one-on-one with Jamie weekly newsletter and get ready to believe in you. If you're tired of hearing the bad news every single day and need some inspiration, some tips, tools, joy, and love hitting your inbox, I'm your girl. Subscribe at jamiekernlima.com or in the link in the show notes. Jamie Kern Lima is her name. Everybody needs Jamie Kern Lima in their life. Jamie Kern Lima. Jamie, you're so inspiring. Jamie Kern Lima. This episode of The Jamie Kern Lima Show contains discussions of sensitive topics, including sexual assault. Our aim is to approach this topic with sensitivity and respect, but viewer, listener, discretion is advised. Do you ever feel like worry and anxiety cost you your happiness and freedom? Do you wish that you could stop or slow that spiral of negative thoughts and rise above rumination? We all worry, now what? My guest today is here to give you powerful answers, including stories, lessons, and a roadmap to awakening, courage, and connection in your life. Today, it's time to start rising above worry for good. Victoria Jackson is a legend, an icon, a trailblazer in the beauty world where her trademark, no makeup makeup, revolutionized the beauty industry and catapulted her to one of the greatest American success stories of our time. She's also a medical pioneer who's been honored by the Pope for her visionary approach and impact in advancing an understanding and funding for NMO and autoimmune-related diseases. In 2017, Victoria was inducted by Gloria Steinem into the National Women's Hall of Fame. She has and continues to do incredible things in her life, yet, like so many of us, she also has more than enough reasons for worry, anxiety, and crippling fear to show up daily. From surviving sexual assault to getting a phone call no parent ever wants to receive, Victoria has spent her life on a true warrior walk of learning to slow anxiety's spiral and not let worry steal her freedom. She's written four amazing books. Her brand new book is out officially now, and it's called We All Worry, Now What? She's also my dear friend, Victoria Jackson. Welcome to the Jamie Kern Lima Show. Thank you. God, that was beautiful. Thank Mm. you so much. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I guess I've been kind of busy. Like you. (laughs) And thank you for having me. I'm really grateful to be here and, you know, just filled with a life of gratitude. A lot been going on and it's it's wonderful to be able to just to be able to to talk about it and share with you. So thank you. Mm. Well, congratulations on your new book and so many other things, by the way. <laughs> I, I was saying uh, that we have the longest intro maybe that I've ever written and I could have written it longer. Oh. Godmother's Bookshop opening, so many things that you are doing out in the world. Um, you know, with We All Worry, Now What? The title of your brand new book yep. um, that is so beautiful and just connects. It's going to connect to so many people and help so many people. Um, and I'm just really excited about it uh, because so many of us, we lose so much of our life to worry, to anxiety, to right. rumination of thoughts. Yeah. And I'm excited to dive into to some of the um, the lessons and stories in the book. Uh, but first, just wanted to ask you, you know, 
in your own journey, in your own journey, um, what has led you to writing such a powerful book? You know, it's, as I say, I mean, I've had a life, you know, well lived and through all of the different milestones, turning points, you know, just moments in my life, anxiety, stress, panic has always sort of sat right on my shoulder. And so I've always navigated, even people go, gosh, with all that you've done, you still deal with, you know, stress and panic disorder. And I go, yeah, I do. And so this book was really, everything for me is about if I've done all this, you can too, You whatever it is that you want to do and here's how. So it was important to me, especially in a time where we live in a world that's just so riddled with, you know, instability, like stress, um, worry. And worry, I always say, is the seed that gets watered, that turns into the stress, the anxiety, the panic. And I just thought, you know, this is how I've had a lot of things that have gone on in my life that have really created a lot of worry. Um, I have my black belt in worry, (laughs) but I also have my black belt in being a warrior. And I Mm. wanted to just share some of the tips that have helped me get through. And knowing that it's not like, oh, I figured it all out. Here's here's all the answers. No, I got to work my program all the time as I'm still living my life and dealing with the challenges mm-hmm. as we all have them. Mm-hmm. Has this been part of your life um, since childhood? Or when did you really start to be aware of worry? And you've been through a lot. I've you've been through a lot. a lot. I always say I was born premature. So I was mm. born uh, three months early. And I always say, I think it was to get a little head start on worry mm. um, because I you know, lived in the hospital for three months before I could even come home. And when I did finally come home, I had a mom that was a little bit overwhelmed and sort of said, but I never really got to bond with you. And, you know, I had a lot of medical issues. So I, I think worry seemed to start kind of really early on. And I was always trying to, whether I was get approval or deal with whatever medical you know, malady I was dealing with at the time, I, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. So I think it's been something that I was aware of that anxiety and my view of the world was probably going to be a little bit more challenging. Mm-hmm. What were some of the things that sort of happened along your journey that maybe um, you mentioned your mom um, and not bonding? What were some of the things? Because I think a lot of people are in the infancy of their own journey of realizing, oh, wow, here's here's what worry or anxiety um, looks like in my life. And maybe here's where it stemmed from. And then just kind of starting on that, that journey of wanting to sort of change their relationship if they can with worry and anxiety and panic and all that. I think that one of the most beautiful parts of this moment in time is thankfully um, people are talking about it and they're sharing it and they're not hiding as much and thinking that yeah. they're alone in it. Um, it is, you know, something that almost every one of us deals with. And so I think right. you so courageously talking about it is so powerful. Um, but has it been something that has built and gotten like to a, a point in your life where then you're like, oh, I have to do something about this? Or? Well, I think people are talking about it now more so because they're feeling it. You know, people mm-hmm. have been feeling worry for so long. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just like with mental illness, mental health, you know, like mm-hmm. people are now talking about things more that maybe they were silently struggling with. Yeah. And for me, I've always been talking about it. You know, it's hard to, when you're living it, you don't really know especially with anxiety, it can be free floating. You know, people could go as they always would go, well, what are you afraid of? Or everything's going great right now. Or why are you stressed out? And Mm -hmm. we can't always put, you know, a face to it, a name to it, a rationale to it. It's Mm -hmm. just something that, you know, we walk with. And I think Mm -hmm. for me, it was early on that mine manifested in feeling like somebody was always going to get me. That Mm -hmm. sort of unsettling feeling, never feeling quite peaceful, you know, restful. There was always just something that was under the surface that was a little bit more in turmoil. And I think it more manifested for me in personal safety, not Mm -hmm. feeling safe or that something was, 
coming down the road for me. And that was a big part of, of worry for me. And a lot of that was being a, in a, you know, a family dynamic where the mom, mom and dad were young. They probably were two people not meant to be with each other. And as a kid, you're, you're picking up all that energy. So that instability feeds into that worry, which then feeds into that stress, anxiety, and a lot of panic disorder. Mm -hmm. How, how old were you when it started? You know, I just remember being by like, I was five, six years old. Um, and I remember my mom at the time going, if you don't calm down, um, they're going to come in, you know, she, and I feel bad because I don't want to just, my mom is a great woman. Oh, and I think it? she was just really at wit's end at time, but it was more her way of saying, it's like, if you don't calm down, they're going to put you in the hospital. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're going to put me in the hospital? No, 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 no. I've got to calm down. And you sort of take all that inward and so you're not really sure how to navigate it and 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 what to do with that. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was a lot of it is so much of it becomes this internal struggle that you don't really know where to turn to, especially when you're young. So it can manifest in acting out, not staying in school, mm -hmm. which for me, you know, I didn't stay in school. I was always finding my way out of like, I know in those early parent conferences, it was like, she doesn't stay in the reading circle. She wanders away. You know, I was mm -hmm. so, it's just that always little bit of that, that stress, trying to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you had, you, know, you talk about personal safety. You had mm -hmm. a life altering incident happen. I did. And it was life altering. And you know, it's, I don't know whether it's a premonition or a sense of that foreboding of uh, being at home in, um, in, our apartment and it wasn't a house, it was our apartment and coming home one night and going in my room. And, you know, it's that really classic, like horror scene where you're in your bedroom late at night and you're, you know, watching TV and you look up in the mirror and there's somebody standing behind you and you're like, what? Um, you know, with a ski mask and a look like an item with a dish rag hanging over it. And I thought it was my brother, because my family did know that I was so vulnerable and always afraid of somebody to come get me, that I thought, oh, it was my brother playing a joke. And I turn around like, Mark. And he's like, don't move. And when you hear a voice that you know is clearly not your brother and one that's saying don't move, you sort of know, wow, this is it. And because at that point, I thought, well, I'm the last victim. My bedroom was off the back of the house. And so I figured mm -hmm. everybody else was gone and, and I was it. And um, that, was, that was a very, you know, you sort of go, wow, I'm 17. I'm in my last year of high school. Is this really it? Like, you know, am I going out like this? And I don't really want to go into all the details of all the bad things that happened to me and my body, but clearly enough to know that I learned about going out of body when something really bad is happening to you, that sense of disassociating and being also the fact that all I kept thinking about was what's happened to my family? Are they all gone? And so there were so many things that were happening and he was known as the pillowcase rapist. It was notorious in California. And um, at the time when I was kept in this really small space, hence I still am claustrophobic, mm -hmm. but I was kept in this small space and um, when I saw him reach over to grab a pillowcase, I thought, well, maybe he's going to be, you know, putting jewelry and things, not that I had anything, but whatever I have in this pillowcase. Um, but when I realized very quickly that he was about to put it over my head and started, I said to myself, I am going to count to three. And you know that feeling you have, like, you're so scared, is something going to actually come out? And I counted to three, and I knew I was just going to scream at the top of my lungs. And I did. He throws off his, his uh, ski mask. I can't really identify him. Drops it on the floor. My bedroom door would get stuck. He was pulling it to try to get out. I'm completely in shock. And I just ran as fast as I could up the stairs. You know, I was bleeding um, to see, you know, if my parents were still there and what was happening in my house. You know, I, I thought I was going to see a very ugly scene in the house. Um, so that was life-changing. Absolutely. But I knew at during that out-of-body kind of time for me, 
that I was here for a reason, Mm -hmm. that my life was here for a reason, that this was not going to be how I died. But it was Mm life-changing. I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, People who know of you, Mm -hmm. know of you as uh, for so many things, but on the outside, we don't always know what someone's going through on the inside, right? Which I think it's so powerful that you wrote a book being so candid and vulnerable that shares real lessons on how do you navigate worry and panic and anxiety um, and also not let it rob you of your freedom and not let it rob you of your joy and not let it rob you of like the life that you want to lead and the impact you want to have. And people that know you know, uh, many know you, of course, for being a pioneer and icon. Um, Oh my goodness, 40 years ago, no makeup, makeup. Mm -hmm. I remember as someone someone who started a beauty company and has (laughs) been in that industry. I Let me just, first of all, (laughs) Let me just brag on my friend for a minute. I remember, I can't even count the number of times where I've seen um, so many brands and be inspired by what you've created (laughs) Um, or even try to do what you've created. All the things, you've been such a pioneer in building women's confidence and helping people feel good about themselves, Um, you know, trademarking no makeup makeup uh, before anyone else used it. There's a a lot of other people, millions of people that know you for your medical, you're a pioneer in the medical space and the research that you've done and the funding and the drugs that have been approved and which I'll talk, uh, I'll ask you about that in a minute. Um, Women's Hall of Fame. Uh, there's there's so much that people know you for, and this other part of you um, has coexisted. And I want to call that out because I think there's so many people that are listening and watching this um, that maybe feel alone yeah. in worrying or in anxiety. And so, can you sort of take us through, you know, having gone through so much and how how have you navigated all of that while also then deciding I'm going to you know become a makeup artist right. and I'm going to start building this career you became one of the most successful women of all time pioneer in television sold a billion dollars in product on television um for Victoria Jackson Cosmetics you've done so much while also having this piece right. of you right. um and so can you kind of share with us how? <laughs> well, I know it sounds crazy to think, how does that like coexist? Yeah. How do you have that level of stress and anxiety and still manage to go out and do it? And um, it's really about, you know, taking leaps of faith, doing it, you know, even when you're uncomfortable. Mm. Um, the th- running theme that I've had in my life has always been about, oh, if I can do this, you can do it. And here's how. So even in my early career as a makeup artist, you know, the first book, um, this is my fifth book. The first book I wrote was called Redefining Beauty. It was really the how-to of, you know, of makeup. Um, and the second one was the why. So everything for me has been really the the teaching experience that even though, like, I couldn't do makeup in the beginning. I was a horrible makeup artist, but I practiced till I could get better. And then, you know, and then I realized, why does it matter? So make up your life was really why does why does makeup matter? What's the the whole reasoning that I came up with the power of mascara and going to the jails for 20 years mm-hmm. and seeing how it really changed people's feelings and thinking um, about themselves. Even though while I'm in the jails, for example, as I've told you, I'm very claustrophobic. I'm going into the jails going can we leave the door open? They're like, leave the door open, like the cell door, Victoria. Like, you know, I'm still going there facing my fears of going into the prisons for 20 years, but knowing that I was doing something that was making a difference for so many women. So they've always coexisted for me. So it's just, I have to, I just push through. And that's so much about Mm. in this book is about that. It's taking the next step, you know, it's facing that. Mm -hmm. And is part of it making the 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 why behind it bigger than yourself to push through the fear? And yeah, and that's, you know, I mean, that's easy to say. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you're going to feel that. And sometimes it's just like, 
I, it doesn't matter that the why might be bigger. I'm just stuck. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get you to think about, you know, in, in one of my books, I wrote perseverance is where the gods dwell. It's like persevering, mm -hmm. like constantly pushing yourself, taking whatever small steps, you know, mm -hmm. putting yourself in the room. My kids always love when I go, well, if you're not in the room, you're not in the room. <laughs> and they're like, what does that even mean, mom? Like you're not, it's like you have to, you have to show up. Yeah. Um, I've always put myself in the room. And then there were times where I had opportunities and I couldn't get in the room. I have stories about, you know, I, I know you did a wonderful job, an incredible job interviewing Oprah and she was here. And there were times where I had an opportunity to be on Oprah's show mm -hmm. and I couldn't get in the room. You know, my anxiety was too high and I, I couldn't get in the room. Will you share that story? Because <laughs> I know that that was sort of like this dream of yours yeah. and that it actually happened. So you and I both have this in common right. that we've sabotaged it for different reasons. But right. can you share this? Because I just, there's people listening right now too that think like, oh, I've blown it. My well, time, my ship has sailed. I missed that opportunity. But it's like, oh, no, no, your whole life is ahead of you. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I just remember... When everyone was telling me, you know, especially in the world of building a cosmetic company, oh, you're not going to be able to compete with the big major companies. And I was like, oh, no, no, I'm going to be able to do it. And someday I'm going to actually, I would picture sitting, you know, across from Oprah and I would be telling her my story. Yeah. So I was visualizing that in my head. And I'm going to be telling Oprah and she's going to be interviewing me and I'm going to be successful. So I always was working to manifest it. And then one day I get the call to go to Chicago, where at the time I wasn't flying, and I was going to go there and, and be the lead, like, woman who'd made it against the odds, my infomercial. And I was like, I, I can't go. I, I can't get there. I'm I'm too afraid. And I You were afraid up, of flying. I was afraid of flying. Yeah. I, I just was, I was just stuck. And I made yeah. up some horrible lie that there was, like, a sickness or something. It was, oh, it was just bad. And I just beat myself up for so long, for so, like years, like, well, that could have been a turning point and you blew that and, you know, okay, it, I didn't get there. And how great later in life, I meet Oprah under a different circumstances and, and have a, a, a really nice friendship and a conversation and a lunch. And you just never know how it's all going to work out. You know, you yeah. never know. And I spent many years just really not forgiving myself for not being able to do something. So we have to look at and give ourselves some grace sometimes that even with all these books that we read and these tips and the things we listen to, sometimes you're just going to fall short of the mark for yourself. And mm -hmm. for some reason, you're not going to do it. But you know what? It's all going to come back around. And somehow maybe that wasn't meant to be, but something else was. You just... The one thing I know, having gone now, as I say, from mascara to medicine and back, you just don't know what life's going to bring up. Mm -hmm. And you just have to give yourself some space and some grace to navigate it, mm -hmm. but not give up. Mm -hmm. Keep putting yourself in that room. Mm -hmm. And keep going for it. There's so much more coming up in this episode. You are not going to want to miss it. But first, I wanted to share this with you. In life, you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams. You stay stuck at the level of your self-worth. When you build your self-worth, you change your entire life. And that's exactly why I wrote my new book, Worthy, How to Believe You Are Enough and Transform Your Life for You. If you have some self-doubt to destroy and a destiny to fulfill, Worthy is for you. In Worthy, you'll learn proven tools and simple steps that bring life-changing results, like how to get unstuck from the things holding you back, build unshakable self-love, unlearn the lies that lead to self-doubt, and embrace the truths that wake up worthiness, overcome limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome, achieve your hopes and dreams by believing you are worthy of them and so much more. Are you ready to unleash your greatness and step into the person you were born to be? Imagine a life with zero self-doubt and unshakable self-worth. Get your copy of Worthy, plus some amazing thank you bonus gifts for you at worthybook.com or the link in the show notes below. Imagine what you'd do if you fully believed in you. 
It's time to find out with Worthy. Imagine, what would you do if you fully believed in you? My weekly free inspirational newsletter is packed with tips and tools to help you find out. It's called One-on-One with Jamie, and it's delivered right to your inbox each Tuesday morning. It's a love letter from me to you, from my soul to yours, and I hope it brings you the words and messages you need at just the right moment. Plus, when you're a part of my free inspirational newsletter community, you'll be the first to get behind-the-scenes content, inspirational messages, and be the first to learn about upcoming events and more. It's the place to be, and I sure hope you'll join me there. So if you're not on the list yet, you can sign up for free at jamiekernlima.com or click the link in the show notes below. And here's to becoming unstoppable together. And now more of this conversation. With your journey, you know, you got a call. We talk about so many of us have reasons in our life every day to worry, right? For some of us, it's um, we don't meet our own expectations. For others, it's health challenges, challenges in finance, you get a career challenge, relationship challenges, Mm -hmm. uh, friendship challenges. So many of us, uh, if we're human, we have reasons to worry every day. And and you know, for you in in this journey, um, just to kind of put it to zoom out for a minute for everyone listening, do you, especially because of how much you continue to serve and impact and create and offer in the world, um, do you also feel like the 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 journey of your relationship with 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 um, worry and anxiety and navigating it and managing it and all that. Do you feel like it's going to, it's a lifelong journey? I I feel like it'll always be a lifelong journey, but it's kind of now has different perspective. Mm-hmm. So for example, you know, being in the world of when my daughter was diagnosed, um, yeah. you know, I have three children and, you know, you, all of a sudden one day, you know, she has an eyeball headache. And then the next thing I know, after going to see some doctors thinking it's going to be something that's simple, I find out that she has a rare condition. They basically tell me um, that she has NMO, neuromyelitis optica, that is sometimes misdiagnosed and confused a lot with MS, and that she has four years to live. And I'm like, what? Um, Okay, well, life just changed. Uh, Closing the book on mascara and makeup and opening the book on medicine. I did not graduate high school due to my pillowcase rapist situation. I didn't go to college. I've been making lip gloss and makeup, so now I'm going to cure an autoimmune disease. Okay. So I was like, yeah, but I'm going to. Mm -hmm. And I am going to learn everything there is about it. And um, I think that set the stage for me of putting worry on a whole different level. So when you've had that kind of worry where you're dealing with life and death um, and you're working to find a cure at what I call the speed of life... um, I'm not as worried in the same way about other things now. It's, so I have a different perspective. I still have worry, but I'm not worrying to the same degree because I'm like, oh, nobody's dying here. Nobody's going blind. Mm. Yeah, I got this. This is good. Mm. So, I, so I have a different kind of life view of it because I've had mm. a very different life experience. You know, there's a famous saying, success leaves clues. Mm-hmm. And and I just want to call this out. Allie was 14 when yeah. you got that call. Yeah. Um, I want to read a quote from you uh, that I just think is so powerful about when you got that call, which a call no parent ever no. wants to get. Um, you say, in place of a diploma, I had what mattered most, a mother's unstoppable determination. Oh. How in those moments, because a lot of us will get bad news, and we feel helpless. And especially when we're when our nature is to worry or to then have our anxiety go through the roof or any of those things. What part of you, if you can just get granular for a minute, yeah. Victoria Jackson, <laughs> what, what part of you um, that we all want to cultivate right. more of in ourselves, by the way, um, is that part where you're like, oh, okay, the doctors just told me this, mm-hmm. but 
I don't accept that. And whether I succeed and fail or in this, I'm going to do whatever I can to have a different outcome and to go for it yeah. and to figure something out I know nothing about. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it's your child, I mean, that's, at least for me, it was just innate. You know, I believe the power of love with the power of love and intention, anything's possible. Mm. So I knew there was no effing way I was mm. going to lose my daughter. It just mm. wasn't going to happen. So I just knew that it was, I didn't have the answer. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be in every, you know, ounce of my being. Um, and then maybe, aha, maybe this is why I'm here. Um, was to save my daughter and save all the people mm -hmm. that have this and shine a light on autoimmune disease. And like the end, and and is revealing itself as I started the work. Because all of a sudden, I went from, you know, six potential doctors in a room to hundreds of researchers, scientists, 45 countries, a biobank, a blood biobank repository, a data collection center, of all these things that are now affecting so many other autoimmune diseases. So you just don't know. You are such a badass. Ugh. You know that. I know you know that. Anyone listening who's first time meeting Victoria Jackson, you are such well, thank you. a badass. I think I'm just determined. You know, I've never seen myself as necessarily a badass, but just as determined. Mm. Like, okay. I'm going to figure this out. And if I can't figure this out, I'm going to ask you, Jamie Kern Lima, to help me figure it out. I'm going to ask this doctor at Stanford. I'm going to learn molecular medicine. I'm going to just question everything, bring people together. I build bridges. Mm. And when you build bridges, you don't, you don't know what's going to be on the other side. You don't know the people that you're connecting that you're building something that you, is so much even bigger than you know or you think or is about you at the time. So I just put it out there. I, you know, people, I wrote a book called The Power of, of Rare, mm -hmm. a blueprint for a medical revolution. I didn't know when I was starting this that somehow if somebody was going to tell me I'd be writing a sort of like the blueprint for how to actually get drugs made, I would have laughed. I've been like, yeah, right. Um, but I realized as I was going through it and things were happening and I was getting drugs made and I'm working with Genentech and this pharmaceutical and that, and I'm seeing, wait, pharma, yeah, pharma's pharma, but pharma's working with all these patients. They're working with these doctors. I need to shine a light on how this process works. Um, it was kind of amazing, things that I had no idea. So I always just want to share um, because somebody else, another mom, dad, foundation, that's going through what I'm going through, um, is going to be able to benefit from that. That's what we need to do in the world. We have to get beyond. I was so worried, and I still worry about Allie. I love my daughter. You know, I'm I'm working on what I just call now cure shot. Uh, I'm working for finding a cure for her. Um, she's doing great, but I'm still a worrier. I'll always be a little nervous, Nellie. But it's I'm also going to be doing the work. Mm. You went from mascara to medicine, mm -hmm. from foundation to creating a foundation, right. <laughs> another foundation, um, from, you know, the science of beauty to the beauty of science. Yeah. And, and you really, you didn't just try. I mean, can you talk, you, you've been honored by the Pope for oh, amazing. amazing. Um, and can you talk about, uh, just to give everyone perspective, just the things you've accomplished in the short amount of time with where um, the Guthy Jackson Foundation is and all the things that you've done in that space uh, because it's who you are. It's how you do things. You like pioneer in the beauty space. Know nothing about the medical field and I just want everyone to hear what you've done because then we're going to transition into your wisdom and your stories and your lessons around we all worry, now what? Right. Uh, because... I feel like you do not write a book until you have got something to say and you've lived it and you understand it. Right. So with with um, the Gethy Jackson Foundation, can you share? Because this is just remarkable. Well, I'll tell you just even, you know, think about like for me, just the Pope, when they asked me for my work in the foundation um, to go to the Vatican and accept this um, pontifical advocacy award. The first time I was asked kind of like that Oprah moment. I turned it down. I was like, oh I didn't gosh. know this. Yeah, I knew I, you'd turn down the I, Oprah the first time. I didn't I know you. I turned down the Pope. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I can't get there. And they're like, yeah. oh my gosh. Literally, 
the opportunity came around where they asked, they, next year, we, they want you to go. And I had two of my girlfriends go, we are taking you. If we have to <laughs> knock you out, over, knock you out, we will take you and you're going. And I am so glad that I did. And I went with my family um, and it was an amazing experience. And what was interesting, besides obviously all the pomp and pope circumstance that goes with that, haha, that was pretty incredible, um, was just until the moment where they uh, were giving me this award and it's this beautiful um, Baccarat piece with all the saints engraved and everything, until that moment and everybody stood up and what was also wild is that Tony Robbins was there and he spoke right before me. Mm. And now Tony Robbins and I, in my earlier life, was when we were doing my very first infomercial. Yeah. So it was sort of this weird, strange moment of like the infomercial, right? And here's Tony and I. And now fast forward all these years later, there's Tony who's doing his amazing good work. Um, and he's also at the Vatican talking about what he's doing. And there we are. And it was just, wow. so for just that moment, right before everyone stood up and it was only until then that I really looked up and I went, wow, what have I been doing? <laughs> um, this is amazing. Um, because I do just put my head down and just like do the work. Mm -hmm. um, the foundation, as I said, I was working, I've been working at the speed of life. When you start meeting people and at one point, Allie and I, Ali said to me, Mom, this isn't just about the two of us. Mm. It's so much bigger, and it really is. You start seeing so many people that are affected, and the foundation has gone around the world. Um, you realize, wow, this is bigger than me, and I've got to really organize and get through my own worry and stress and anxieties because through it, when Ali has an attack— it's very bad. She can go between blindness and paralysis, and you don't know if it's coming back. So navigating actual real-time situations while you're also trying to find cures and get people on board when you're having to build those bridges that I talked about, there's a lot of dynamics that go in that. And so it's been extraordinary to see the foundation now. When I first started, it was interesting. They said, you know, to cure a disease... You have to have a lot of, you have to have samples. You have to have samples from people. And I'm like, what does that mean? What do you mean? And I said, well, you're going to have to have people's blood samples. And I was like, how am I doing that? How am I first just trying to even find people that have this? Because yeah. at the beginning, there was no one I even knew who had it. So finding somebody, and now I'm going to start having to get people's blood. Hence, I thought, I'm going to start a program called Blush for Blood bringing my crazy beauty background into like, I'm going to get these women together. And if you give me your blood, you'll get a blush. It sounds so absurd, but it shows when you're working at the speed of life, when you think you've got four years before the sands of time on your daughter's life is running out, you start doing all different things. And we had a woman, a nurse that would literally go anywhere in the world and she would collect people's blood samples. I now have 100,000 samples in a biobank with yes. everybody's uh, data because you realize, too, in the world of medicine, people don't share information. Mm -hmm. So um, I also was fortunate through the success of my company and my husband's. We spent $80 million of our own money. Mm -hmm. We don't have any deals, kickbacks with pharmaceutical companies, nothing. We've spent $80 million that's just out there in the universe to help catalyze what has been now four therapies that are out in the market that serve the world worldwide. Four therapies, four therapies. because of your work are yes. now available yes. out there. Yep. So that's just been extraordinary. And every year I do a conference, I bring in patients and caregivers, researchers, and scientists. I just had my last one a week ago at UCLA and bring them in um, all over to share information. And that's how I've gotten things done. It's fostering collaboration and people working together. Well, <laughs> thank you for sharing all that to you. Because when you, again, when you do something, you do something. Yeah. Like when you do something, you do something. <laughs> and with this new, beautiful, powerful book, We All Worry, Now What?, 
Can you talk about um, the warrior walk yep. and and warrior wisdom? I think, you know, for me, I just share wisdom. What's great about the book, too, I have to say, is the, the women that have offered up, and there's a couple of wonderful guys in there, Jay Shetty and mm -hmm. Yogi Cameron, but I wanted people to see how do people navigate their, when they're worried? How do they deal with stress, anxiety, worry? And so each chapter opens with whether it's Jane Fonda talking about what she worries about in climate change and how she deals with that, or Gloria Steinem and how she navigates what she thinks about, you know, in the in the world today and in the, the feminist movement that she started. And Kris Jenner, how she deals with the the Kardashian group, the amazing empire that she has built, um, how she deals with that with her faith every day. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And for me, I just wanted to showcase in the book, it's really whatever works. Different things work for different people. Mm -hmm. For me, it's zooming out. It's taking that next step. It's getting that perspective, but it's still moving through. Um, it's knowing when I have to take that time just for myself mm. or I have to go and meditate or I have to just be quiet or I have to just go out with a bunch of girlfriends and, you know, have a night of drinking some wine. You know, mm -hmm. it's knowing what that prescription is for me that helps me get to that next place that I've sort of set my sights on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just to kind of, um, share a little bit more about that. In this book, you have a number of the people you just named all contributing to it, yeah. really, and sharing how worry shows up in their life and what they do about it. I wanted to ask you specifically um, about the five steps, like the five steps to slow anxiety spiral from warrior to warrior, yeah. um, and the five steps that you talk about. Well, for me, a lot of it is we get stuck in the rumination yeah. You know, we really, everybody just sort of ruminates and we, you know, that analysis, paralysis, we just get really stuck. And um, it's just having to work through even the rumination, you know, that fear that we have that we're not going to get it right or just being immobilized, you know. So I think that that is a, a very big one for me that I found was really helpful to people that they just ruminate. They're like, nothing's going to work. Nothing's going to get me out of this. And they're afraid. Like you have to, you know, zoom out. You have to really zoom out and try to get perspective. That's what I do first and foremost. I have to look. It's almost like that. Dis it's almost in this strange way when I was disassociating mm. from my, what was going on. I had to almost disassociate, zoom out, look down. It's somewhat as what I do now, except I'm much more associated than disassociated. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm looking down at what the situation is. I'm looking down at what's the problem here? What do I want to try to achieve? I'm trying to like do this almost like mapping in my mm -hmm. head. And then I go through my next step, which is just take that next step. Mm -hmm. Try to just get through that next step. Um whatever that is for me, whether it's, you know, calling a friend or taking an action or going through a walk. That's mm -hmm. what's really important to me is those two, I'd say for me more than anything, get me started because you got to get started. Mm. And I think when you're just sharing the, the zooming out of, um, is that kind of like an example of that maybe when you talk about what you went through with your daughter and, and now if, a problem arises that you might worry over, you can actually zoom out and have like perspective. Like, okay, no one's dying here. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be like having that kind of zoomed out perspective that makes whatever's happening in the moment feel. Well, I, I was um, reading, I, I attribute it to Rob Lowe, but I know it's, I, I'm not sure exactly where that saying came comes from. And it, it really does help me, especially since I live in, in it's still a, a world of never knowing if my phone's going to ring and God forbid my daughter's having an attack or so I always have to say, if it's not happening now, it's not happening. Mm. So it's keeping me always in the mm. present. So if it's not happening now, it's not happening. So she's not calling you right now. The phone's not ringing. That thing that I'm worrying about hasn't happened yet. So um, it keeps me more in the present. That's really good. Yeah. 
That's really powerful because so many of us, we live, we worry about stuff that happened in the past or we worry about stuff that might happen in the future um, or might repeat itself again or, but it's like, if it's not happening now, it's not happening. And and you know what, Jamie, here's the thing too, like books like yours, and I I mean this sincerely, are really helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe in, I love to support other women, other people's philosophies. You know, my book, my thinking is one way. I want to just share it. But there's so many great people out there. Like I know I know so many of all these listeners have all listened to your book or they've read your book. Um, it's really powerful. So I'm always going back to, even with whatever is coming up in my life, I'm going to flip a page of yours open. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to, you know, Byron Katie and look at some of her things, like things that I'm somebody that's always, that's because I didn't go finish high school. I didn't go to college. That's really been my education. Mm. My education has been my friends, my other women, men that write things, say things. I think that's really important. I want, of course, I want people to, you know, read my book and I want it to help a lot of people, but there's a lot of good things out there that you have to find out like what resonates for you. Mm-hmm. What ultimately is going to get you to that next place to move, to zoom out, to have that perspective, to take that action so that you can come full circle for yourself. You say belief isn't a prerequisite to overcoming worry, but what you choose to visualize can impact your ability to kind of move through fear and worry. Yeah. yeah. I, a big book that influenced me at the time was a book by Shakti Gawain called Creative Visualization. Mm. And so for me, and I, I know um, my husband, he's a big believer in Napoleon Hill. Like if you, you have to believe it to achieve it. For me, I'm much more of a visual person. And, and by the way, I think believing it and achieving it is critical too. For me, I just have to see it. Like I work with visuals, pictures in my head. Mm-hmm. And if I can see it, then I'm more able to achieve it. And what's an example of that? I have to see things. If I want to manifest something, yeah. I always say this is a good thing for people to think about. Like manifest, picture, you know, the house that you're living in, maybe the car you're driving, whatever it is that you want to manifest. I have to see things. I see them as pictures. So even with my daughter, I was seeing a cure. Mm. I was seeing whether it was her taking a pill that was like the therapy. I see it in my head and then I work to create it. So I think if you can create this kind of picture book, this the stories that will go along with the pictures for me seem to follow. So that's, that's really how I work. So I have found that with this kind of creative visualization, um, all of a sudden, it's interesting. Like I wrote in one of my early books, people said, well, how do you, did you know about to be a CEO of a, of a company? And I was like, I didn't. So for me... And I know know people have different feelings about acting as if they like it, they don't like it. For me, I just had to picture it. I had to see it in my head. And then all of a sudden one day, I would be thinking like, how does she dress? How does she talk? And then one day I realized I was that person. Like they'd sort of seamlessly integrated. And um, I was always very, very insecure. I, I think I told you this story of when I was shooting my very first infomercial, Um, And I was very nervous. I'd been just at that point, just the makeup artist on sets. And now here I'm going to be now doing this as my show with my products. And I was very insecure and showing up that day. I just thought, I I don't know that I can pull this off. I wasn't even used to, I didn't even wear much makeup. So, which was also, I was doing no makeup makeup then. So I was kind of doing some new things that, you know, just, I wasn't sure how they were going to be received. And I remember that the gentleman who was shooting that day, the um doing all the photography and we're getting ready before the shoot he looks at me and he goes victoria i have photographed some of the most beautiful women in the world and i have found there's two types of women there's women with great beauty and there's women with great brains and you are a woman with great brains (laughs) he says this to me i'm like oh wow okay yeah and i'm thinking like with all these people there i'm like did he just call me like a dog? Like what, what? And he goes, so we're going to put you outside. We're going to get you some air and it's going to be beautiful. And I was just like, and it was such a gift that he gave me because I just from that moment on went, dude, I so got this. 
And it was like my worst fears had been, I was afraid I wasn't pretty enough, smart enough, whatever it was. And as I sat there in the chair that he put out in the parking lot was the cars are whizzing by. I said, I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to shoot this and I'm just going to like sell my product from my heart. And I'm going to visualize that people are going to love it. They're going to call, they're going to buy it. And, you know, from my very first show, we did a million dollars a week in sales and it never really stopped. So I'm very much about no matter what happens, and a lot of that's going to happen. You give that power to that thing that you don't want to happen and then it's happening. It's just how you navigate it, how you get through it. How do you, what do you see on the other side of that? And uh, that is so impressive because I think I would have been like, what? I would have been like, first of all, there's not two types of women. Second of all, like, I would have been like, I would have been feisty. Um, that's amazing. So you zoom out and you're like, okay, here's what I want to visualize. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And you did that yourself. All those years on QVC, I'm sure you visualized yeah. all those people calling in and, and buying the cosmetics and all the amazing success you've had with the book. Somewhere in your brain, you have to have pictured it, seen it, and then you just you work to manifest that. And it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And I find sometimes I like choose what I want to visualize. And sometimes I just see something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I think that's good. Because I think that means it's going to (laughs) happen. And then it sort of like boosts my belief. But yeah, I remember so many times I did over a thousand live shows um, on QVC. And I once heard actually Pastor Joel Osteen said, that when he first started uh, doing sermons, he was very nervous and he would pray that when people would be changing the TV channel, when they would turn him on, that they couldn't turn right. away, that they couldn't turn him off. Yeah. So I started doing that prayer, like before right. the QVC stuff. And I, I, you know, I would visualize like a person at home and it didn't even matter if they bought something, right. but I like, I would visualize them and just sort of like feeling more worthy yeah. if they, you know, just saw, felt yeah. seen through stuff. And yeah, I visualize stuff a lot. Yeah. Um, I I believe in that. And I, and I think what you said is really is really powerful because someone might be worrying about something and maybe you can't quite believe the solution yet, but if you could visualize it, it's yeah. sort of like that step. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's it's so good. it's whatever it is that's going to help you. And for me, I work best in pictures and visualizing. And I did it, you know, I'm still doing that with my daughter. I'm visualizing I will have the cure. I now have the therapies that are are managing it, but I will have the cure. So I will, and I say between the power of love, intention, visualization, I will get there. There's really nothing that you can't do. There's really nothing. Mm. Well, talking about, if I were to visualize the most beautiful bookstore in existence, I think I might visualize a brand new bookstore uh, in Summerland, California called Godmothers that is literally opening the week that this comes out. So I know, right? uh, amazing timing. <laughs> and can you talk about um, what a special place that is and how you've created? You know, I think, I think when I think of the through line of our conversation and I think about every person listening and watching this, I just, I, I really hope everyone hears that all of the things that you want to do and can go after and continue creating and continue impacting can coexist with the stuff that we think, you know, may be something that um, would disqualify us from doing that, right? Yeah. Or maybe something that's just us or that we hide in or feel shameful about or feel like, oh, something's wrong with me because I worry or have anxiety or this or that. But it's like, okay, um, that doesn't disqualify you and yeah. and taking these steps, right? Whether it's through some of the lessons and we all worry now what through the different things you've shared that can resonate right. with you, different, you know, whether it's therapy, different modalities, different, we're all on different journeys of figuring out what works for us, but that both can happen. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's where, you, you know, you don't know what the surprise is in life. Like for the bookstore, for example, yeah, I have a wonderful partner, Jennifer, Jennifer Rudolph Walsh, amazing powerhouse, all on her own with an amazing story. Yeah. Um, and we decided one day talking that, you know, bookstore, a gathering space, um, Godmothers, you know, honoring the women that um, have done the, some of the most incredible things in the world. And um, I saw that in my head, you know, I, I saw the building, I saw what the store would look like, and then just work to create it. Now, 
I didn't have plans my whole life. I was going to, you know, have a bookstore. And I'm thrilled that this is another chapter, literally, of a book that now I can put some of my books in the bookstore. Um, but you have to leave space um, for the rooms to dream in your in your mind, you know, and not know and what the surprises are that I met somebody who also had a vision and we connected and also decided to do this. And that's going to coexist along with the work that I'm working on still in medicine, uh, bringing back my no makeup makeup. Yes. I mean, all of those things. Um, I have it on right now. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. Thank right, you. Let me, just, uh, let me just say this. Right before we started filming, I actually showed Victoria <laughs> my compact because you have, I love, see how I, how for me, when I built like, cosmetics, it was like, what's one product that's like yeah. the best? you know, that I want to use every day. And with your No Makeup Makeup Foundation, I opened it to show Victoria how literally I use it so much that it's down to the pan. <laughs> I'm like, I wanted to show, um, I now hoard it. It's that, it's so great. And and this is really, really um, special and cool too. You know, one of my best friends, Jackie, was always into fitness and she left her kind of dream of doing a fitness career and joined It Cosmetics in our living room before right. we could even afford to pay ourselves. And she went through that whole journey as our very first employee. We grew to over a thousand employees. Now, many years later, she just launched her own company again wow. um, called Fit Kitty that, you know, it's about um, uh, athleisure and fitness. It's part of who she is. You, you know, 40 years ago, pioneered, changed the beauty industry, um, no makeup, makeup. You've had so many different um, beautiful chapters in your life and offerings to the world, uh, many of which we've talked about on this episode, many more we haven't. But uh, now you are launching this yeah. brand new evolution of no makeup, makeup that I'm Love now it. wearing obsessively. Thank and you. that's incredible. Yeah. I wanted to make... Um, 13 shades of what I was going to, and I do call, I think it's like the best foundation on the planet. I'm like, I'm just going to come up with this one amazing product right now that is truly awesome and is true to what I've been talking about for 40 years yeah. and trademarked a long time ago, no makeup, makeup. Um, because I really, and so much of it came to life for me as I did go to the jails for so long. And I would see women that were using makeup as a mask or as war paint in mm -hmm. there a lot of times that I just want, I wanted women, I want to help them like look and feel their best, but just not overly do it. And as yeah. I've gotten older and I'm now getting close to turning 70, um, you just don't, you don't need to wear a lot of makeup, you know, it actually can age you in all the wrong ways. So, and even if you're young, I want people to have like great skin and not clogging their pores and overdoing it and layering, not to say you can't have fun, but I just did want to make like the perfect amount. So where just less is best, more is too much, no makeup, makeup is just perfect. So I'm really, really excited about it. So many of my friends are using it and posting about it. And it's a new, it's also a new world for me. It's sort of like 15 years ago, um, I, I stopped, as I said, mascara to medicine. I was selling through infomercials and QVC, and now it's a whole new frontier of creators and influencers and, you know, marketing in a whole different way. So, um, but I do believe, as I believe then, if you've got a great product, product is king, that's what gets people coming back. That's what makes people use it up so the little pan is showing <laughs> and they're compact. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think it's so beautiful because I think, you know, I just know one of the things I love about this show and launching the Jamie Cranley show and having these conversations is I get messages after the show, right? When this airs and there will be people that will write in and be like, I just realized that, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 40 years ago, mm -hmm. I used to love this thing and it's actually in me. And I want to do it again, yeah. right? Or do it better or do it in a different way. And, and I think that it's so inspiring. You shared you're almost 70, like, you know, and you're launching this business. Like, yeah. it's incredible. And also, of course you are. <laughs> yeah. And you got it. I mean, and that is the best part of your show and shows like this, that you're doing it because it's, it's women can do it. We can do it. And I don't yeah. mean just women. I'm going to say women and men and everybody. It's like... You just got to do it. You just, you know, if we all worry now what helps give you a start. Um, yeah. And it's, by the way, it's the first time I read the actual 
Um, I've, I've done this. This is the fifth book, but I'd never read any of the books. Um, I did the audio version and it was great. If I can help guide you through, if you can hear it in my voice, anything that helps you get to that next place to take that next step, um, it's just the world is amazing. And yes, we have the stress, the anxiety, the worry, the blah, blah. But there's so many beautiful things out there and there's so much potential that everybody has inside of them yeah. that good for you for helping un unlock that it's mm. just there's nothing more beautiful than that well that's what you're doing in this book <laughs> and i think you know if you're watching us or listening right now and you feel like worry is holding you back or anxiety or any of that and you feel like you feel like we're, your relationship with worry and how it is in your life right now is almost like costing you your joy or your freedom or you know keeping you stuck. Uh, I am so excited for you to read We All Worry, Now What? Uh, not only Victoria sharing her incredible wisdom in this beautiful book, also a number of other um, luminaries out there who are sharing you know, how they've navigated worry in their own life. And uh, yeah. like you said earlier, I think that we can all, when we all just like share our stories and what's worked for us, it's like you then can, you know, not only see yourself and other people feel less alone, uh, more enough, um, more in community in this journey, but then you take what serves you out of it. And I think, you know, you take what what you feel resonates with you that you can apply to your own life and your own journey. And so I'm really excited for everyone to pick up their copy of what we all worry now what um, and also um, uh, you know you can also get it um, in the audio version as well and what I wanted to ask you Victoria is for everyone listening and watching right now who wants to pick up their copy of the book or grab their shade of no makeup makeup or learn more uh, about the Gathy Jackson Foundation and everything else that you're up to and um, where's the best place for them to find you. So the best place for the Guthy Jackson Foundation and for anybody dealing with any uh, medical in the, in the world of autoimmune disease, um, NMO Resources is an app. You can download it on your phone for free. Um, if you have a friend that maybe was diagnosed or a family member with MS, um, there's a lot to learn about NMO that will really shed some light on autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease and cancer is what I'm working on now in, in addition. So that would be um, where you would learn that. Um, you could also read Saving Each Other, which is what I call my memoir that Allie and I wrote together when she was first diagnosed. It's actually a very, very powerful book and one at the time I didn't promote as much because I was really just living, you know, working on, on cures and not taking a whole lot of time out for the promotion. But it's a really powerful book. And also in that same area would be The Power of Rare, which is a blueprint for a medical revolution for anybody out there that is working on how to think about cures. And this is really the roadmap, the blueprint of how I was able to get four therapies made. And it's a very powerful book that I co-wrote with Dr. Michael Yeaman, who is head of molecular medicine at UCLA and my partner uh, in all things science. And, um, and then in terms of makeup, uh, mm -hmm. yep, so let's switch gears to makeup. There is no makeupmakeup.com and you can follow us on Instagram and all those fun things. Um, and the book, the book is going to be out. It's at Godmothers. It's online. It's in pre-order, as you said, on, for, on Amazon. And I'm really proud of it. I think it's going to help a lot of people. I'm very grateful. Thank you today for having me here to be able to talk about it and, um, and having people just hear about my story. Mm, well, thank you so much. Um, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your leadership in so many areas of life. Like, thank you for your championship of stuff that matters. Thank you for sharing parts of your story today. And I'm so excited for everyone to learn a lot more. And we all worry now what? If you love today's episode too, my only ask is that you please click on the follow or subscribe button for the show on your app and give it a rating, a review, and then share this episode with everyone you believe in. Share it with another person in your life who could benefit from it. Post it and share it with others online or in your community who just might need the words and tools and lessons in this episode today. 
You never know whose life you're meant to change today by sharing this episode. And thank you so much for joining me today. And before you go, I want to share some words with you that couldn't be more true. You, right now, exactly as you are, are enough and fully worthy. You're worthy of your greatest hopes, your wildest dreams, and all the unconditional love in the world. And it is an honor to welcome you to each episode of The Jamie Kern Lima Show. Here, I hope you'll come as you are. Heal where you need, blossom what you choose, journey toward your calling, and stay as long as you'd like, because you belong here. You are worthy, you are loved, you are love. I love you. And I cannot wait to join you on the next episode of The Jamie Kern Lima Show. Do you struggle with negative self-talk? Living with a constant mental narrative that you're not good enough is exhausting. I know because I spent most of my life in that habit. The words you say to yourself about yourself are so powerful. And when you learn to take control over your self-talk, it's life-changing. And I wanted to give you a free resource that I created for you if this is something that could benefit your life. It's called Five Ways to Overcome Negative Self-Talk and Build Self-Love. And it's a free how-to guide to overcome that negative self-talk to build confidence and develop unshakable self-love so that you can dream big and keep going in the pursuit of your goals. Don't let self-sabotaging thoughts hinder your progress any longer. It's time to rewrite the script of your life, one filled with self-love resilience, and unwavering belief. If you're ready to take charge of your narrative, build unwavering confidence, and empower yourself to persevere on the path to your dreams, you can grab your free guide to stop overthinking and learn to trust yourself at jamiekernlima.com slash resources, or click the link in the show notes below. Who you spend time around is so important as energy is contagious and so is self-belief. And I'd love to hang out with you even more, especially if you could use an extra dose of inspiration, which is exactly why I've created my free weekly newsletter that's also a love letter to you, delivered straight to your inbox from me. If you haven't signed up to make sure that you get it each week, just go to jamiekernlima.com to make sure you're on the list and you'll get your one-on-one with Jamie weekly newsletter and get ready to believe in you. If you're tired of hearing the bad news every single day and need some inspiration, some tips, tools, joy, and love hitting your inbox, I'm your girl. Subscribe at jamiekernlima.com or in the link in the show notes. I am so excited for this book. You know why? Because it's going to save so many people. It's going to save you. Worthy. Your new beautiful book, Worthy. Get this book. This book, I'm telling you, it's a book that can change anybody's life who picks it up. Anybody who's ever felt that they were not good enough, didn't measure up, something's missing in your life. I have to tell you, it's powerful. It's happening. It's worthy. Imagine, what would you do if you fully believed in you? I went from struggling waitress facing nonstop rejection to founder of It Cosmetics, a billion dollar company, by learning how to overcome self-doubt and believe I am worthy of my hopes and dreams. And I'm sharing how you can too in my new book, Worthy, how to believe you are enough and transform your life. If you're ready to truly trust yourself and break through that barrier of self-doubt, and know that where you come from, or even where you are right now, doesn't determine where you're going, then worthy is for you. It's time to go from doubting you're enough to knowing you're enough. It's time to step into all of who you are and into the person you were born to be. And it's time to believe that you are worthy of it. Because in life, we don't become what we want. We become what we believe we're worthy of. 
join the Worthy movement today by grabbing your copy of Worthy anywhere books are sold and head to worthybook.com now for free gifts, including my five-part course on becoming unstoppable and my 95-page Worthy workbook action plan that teaches you how to implement the tools from the book into your real life right now. Worthy is groundbreaking. Yo. Oh my God. Worthy, you are worthy. This book is going to change lives. This book literally will teach you how to actually feel worthy so that you can have the strength, you can have the confidence. The lessons in this book and the strategies will change your life. You will never be the same again after you read this book. Jamie's book, Worthy, is a must read. It is going to inspire you, empower you, give you the hope that you need and the kick in the rear end that you deserve. Jamie's book Worthy is incredible. The gifts are going away, but they're all free right now on worthybook.com. It's such an honor to share this podcast together with you. And please note, I'm not a licensed therapist, and this podcast is not intended as a substitute for the advice of a physician, professional coach, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. If you loved this incredible episode with Victoria Jackson, I promise you, you're going to also love this life-changing episode right here of the Jamie Kern Lima Show with Oprah, where we talk about how to hear your intuition, tap into your purpose, and discover the dream your creator has for you. It's up next just for you.